Well, hey, everybody. So let's talk about something, uh, intake seals. It's one of those things that they just kind of go bad um, from sitting. I mean, they're rubber seals. They'll deteriorate, whatever. This is going to be kind of a quick video because it's pretty simple. Um, so if you got hard starting or if your idle's you know, up and down and up and down or it won't sit at one spot, what you can do is take your trusty starting fluid and you'll have a manifold, you know, and your carburetor will be in front of it, but you'll spray one manifold and then spray the back, you know, connection there. They'll have these uh, V-band clamps over them. Just spray around that. And if your idle changes, that means you have an intake leak. It's pretty simple. So now you got to change your intake seals. So jump on the old JNP cycles. And I guess I should say this will work for uh, shovel heads and iron heads. You know, any shovel head, any iron head. And I'll explain a couple of differences here coming up. Okay. But this is uh, the ones I use. They're pretty expensive. They're almost 80 cents a piece. So something to think about there. You got a budget for this one. Um, and you need freaking two of them. So that's almost a dollar sixty in repairs. So I've already took this one apart, of course. But uh, this has an S and S carburetor. You let it loose from the bracket. Take the two bolts out of the back of it. Set it off to the side. Set your spacer gasket off to the side. If you have a kind carburetor, it still uses these same. It's not going to be S and S, but it has a similar manifold with the exact same intake seals. So, <clears throat> here we are. Got it off. Next thing I like to do is I'll come in with a wire brush and I'll just clean off everyone else's shit from the last 40 something years. And I do that on, you know, all of it. So, and here's what your old seals might look like. See that pinched ring? That's the only spot this one was sealing in. There we go. Yeah. And this one honestly wasn't too bad. Neither one of these were too bad. But it's been years and they've never been changed. But you see on this one, right there, that's air coming in. Yep. So this one wasn't setting right. Now we can get into some deep stuff about clocking your... Uh, intake manifold or clocking your heads so that when you stick this on there you don't have any gaps see how that has pretty big gaps on either side that's not necessarily good but this guy's not paying me enough see if I made it up fresh to that one how big of a gap we have on that side but if we split the difference it'll work this guy's not paying me enough to uh, do all that he just wants the intake seals replaced so guess what intake seals are what you're gonna get so the way I do this <clears throat> is I roll my seals up on top of the manifold right this is the bottom if you have an SNS SNS goes on top and then I'll set it in place even as I can get it and I'll just take a Usually two hands. I'm sorry, I got my big mugs in the way. Push that over. Push that over. Ah. And it's going to sit something like that. This didn't go. If I let go of it, it's going to fall. So this is for uh, video purposes. All right. But it will hold itself in place slightly once you do that. So you have that sitting in place as good as you can get it. Then you take these, and I always break them loose, and walk them through and walk it around. And you're not going to do this first try. It's going to take 10 tries, and you're going to be real pissed off. If you got a buddy that can hold the manifold, that makes it a lot easier. I don't have any friends, so i got to do all this on my own. You stick that through, put the nut on it spin them back around to where you can get to them from the other side and tighten them down and that's it.
put your carburetor back on, fire it back up. That's nice and easy, man. Um, some guys will put electrical tape. You know, you put this on with your manifolds. Some folks will put electrical tape around that. They say it helps to seal. What it does is it helps hold your manifold in place when your heads aren't clocked. You can see here, this one had electrical tape on it. This one didn't, but it's still pretty ate to shit from being old. And uh, if you get into newer bikes, you're going to run into, and I don't have any of these with me, so I apologize. They're gonna have like plastic seals, plastic looking O-rings. It's gonna have more of a square shape. And I might have, uh, yeah, kinda. Something like this that slides over it. Oh. So you'll put the plastic O-ring on. Then you'll slide this over it. And then you still clamp it down with the same clamps. Um, this one is off of a O-ring replacement kit that I think you can get on TC Brothers. And I've never had luck with them, so that's why it's just sitting in my junk cabinet. But that's it. That I mean, it's that easy. I can't sit here and make things up for you to try to make it seem hard. Intake seals are real common. They go bad, they dry out. Um, somebody replaced your head gaskets back in 1984 and they didn't clock the heads because they were blackout drunk on some old whiskey. And uh, probably that good old school biker meth. And you got this big gap like this one here that you're trying to make up with. So if I was doing this right at this point, I'd pull both heads off, put new genuine James gaskets on with a fire ring and clock these heads a little bit because you put those down hand tight you got a little bit of play and then this thing along those push in there and just sit and it'd be perfect but this is a big old gap so we'll make it work i'll figure it out if you guys got any questions comments concerns uh comment i guess i need to start saying subscribe because the youtube analytics say none of you sons of bitches subscribe so subscribe and we'll see you later